Hello, everyone. Welcome to Painting Class. My name is Christina Moyer. Thank you for joining me in my first ever live YouTube. I'm so nervous. I'm trying it out with a webcam. Um, hopefully, continuing onward, I will do something more um, with like a streaming service thing, um, encoder. And but for now, we're going to try it just with the webcam. <laughs> see how it goes. So I hope that you have your 11 by 14 canvas ready with uh, your drawing. It's very quickly done. And I hope that you can see. Oh, and here comes Charlie to say hello. He is jumping for joy. I see you guys. Hold on. Let me get you. Come here. Come here, baby. Come on. Let's show you to everybody. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Here he is. <laughs> you guys see him. Oh, say hello, baby. He doesn't know where he's in. I think he sees himself on the laptop over there. Okay. Down you get. Hope you guys can hear me well. Um, oh no, he's getting caught up in my microphone. Okay. She got in the wireless, you know, that's all good. Well, let's get started. Let me see. Uh, I feel like maybe we should move closer. Move you guys closer to that. I still need room to be able to paint. Uh, but with the webcam, this is this is what we got. So hopefully it's going to be good for you guys. And uh, actually, I'll move this. And then just working it out, working it out. And hopefully you'll be able to see well. And so we have the um, picture that I've already created right there. It's also on the thumbnail. And... I've got my paint palette and yeah, hopefully in the future too, so I can show you like the paint palette while we're working. Uh, but while we're working, I'll try and show you if there's anything to see like mixing wise on the palette. If it's really important, I'll make sure to show you. Uh, but we're gonna do a lot of mixing. We're gonna start with the background and we're gonna do a lot of mixing on the canvas for this piece. One reason that that I'm doing that is because we want to mix um, because of the time. So when you only have a couple hours to paint and otherwise I might have just done the whole background and then painted the, the rabbit on top. Instead, I'm painting around the rabbit and then painting the rabbit because when we're doing a dark background to paint a light rabbit on top. I don't know if you've ever tried to paint your house with like a lighter color on top of a darker color, but you need, you end up doing lots of layers. So we don't have time for that. So this is why I've sketched out the rabbit, just using a brown pencil crayon. And now we're going to work on the background. So I'm going to grab uh, this brush here because I it's a bit of a stiffer um, bristled brush and it's a medium size, like see how much space it covers. So it's gonna cover quickly. And uh, you can just let dust off your canvas a little bit too. <laughs> so I'm gonna start up in this area here and in the picture you can see that there's kind of purples, blues, browns, some greens, and we kind of make our way into this more vivid green, light blue, like turquoise brown area in the front to give us that spatial feeling. And I've got my water ready. And if you are watching live or on the replay, feel free to tell me where you're watching from. Say hello. Love to hear you where you're at. Can you hear me okay? If you're watching, let me know if you can hear me okay. How's the sound quality? If you can't hear me at all. <laughs> hello, hello. Do you hear me? <laughs> Say hello. It'll be really awkward if you can't hear. In fact, I'm going to get my husband to test it. Steven? Okay, sounds good. Wonderful. So you have all your materials ready. If you're subscribed to my newsletter, then you know that uh, what the materials list was. So make sure you can go to my website, just christinamoyer.com, super simple. And so I'm gonna just like gather a bunch of different brushes, lots of fun different ones. I like this one 
this kind of oval mop for kind of blending the background. So I'm gonna use that guy, um, this guy. And then when we're gonna go like around the rabbit, I want something that's gonna give me a little more control. So I'm gonna use an angle brush, half inch to, this one's three quarter inch, um, but a half inch would work. If you go down to a quarter inch, they're gonna be taking a bit longer. So these are the probably the three main brushes to use. Also, when you're filling your water, just fill a little bit. Like I wouldn't go any more than that. That's almost too much, okay? So that's, you know, half an inch, no more than half an inch in your water jars. I have two, so that one can be for my like dirty water and then clean water. Without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to get my paint on my palette. So let me see if I can just show you that while we're... Do, do, do. Aha, this is how we'll do it. Wonder, actually, maybe I can show the whole thing. Haha. -ha. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so I'm just going to gather a bunch of different colors. You don't have to have these exact ones. I've mentioned it already in my newsletter, but I will just voice them off as I go. For those of you who, you know, have gotten that newsletter, but want to follow along. And I know some people want to follow along exactly, but I like you to make it your own. So don't worry if it's not 100%. So that was cobalt blue that I'm putting on. I'm going to get this dark purple color. It's a prism violet in Liquitex. Some of these paints, I'm going to do a lot of that purple. That one's going to be a lot. Now, you actually, I end up wasting it. I honestly do. So I'm going to try not to put too much on there. I'm going to want to put maybe some burnt umber. Probably won't do exactly like the previous painting. But I want something kind of lighter to blend it in. So I'm rather than just using a white, uh, I'm going to use this light blue. And I'm going to put it over here. It's probably too much. <laughs> Let's see, I think I want some green there too. So I've got this. This is like ancient. This is, <laughs> I shouldn't say it like that, but it was my grandma's paints. So I still have some of my grandma's paints. And yeah, they're, they're interesting, let's say, in terms of like the age. So, you know, if you can't like open it easily, just grab a cloth and wrap it around. I have to do that constantly. I don't really love these kinds of lids, but this tube is really great in terms of getting a lot of product out. So you can see that one's really thick. I don't know if that's just what it was meant to be or <laughs> if it's over age has, has done that. Okay, so kind of keeping my space a little bit organized. Do I want any... I'm going to get all my colors up because this is going to move quickly. So we want to be really organized and ready. So I'm going to get my foreground colors out too. So I've got raw sienna. I like to start with a little and then add more because if I add too much, what I end up doing is wasting, but instead of wasting, I put it on canvas. And should we put a little pink in the background? What do you think? This is your painting. Have fun with it. So I'm kind of sticking with analogous colors and then you might have some opposing colors just to add some contrast and a little pizzazz. Right now I'm putting this awesome, it's one of my favorites. It's this uh, bright aqua green. So fun. I love that color. So cool. And then I want, um, I put burnt umber. I also want some raw umber. So raw umber is similar, but it's uh, less warm. So it's more neutral. The uh, burnt umber, this one, if you can see them together, see how this one has a bit of red in it. You can see like red. So kind of makes it more warm, that kind of thing. So I think I have all the colors I want. If if I need to add more, I can add more. Um, we're not, you know, going in a crazy state where we can't. You can also spray your canvas to begin. So I have this water bottle on hand just in case. It's just going to help me because I'm going to have to add water to some of these, especially like this green, just to make it uh, go further. And I, unless you want to paint really thick, but I caution that 
uh, in terms of having it dry in time to do some of the details. So if you just do a quick spray like that, that's all it needs. Wake up your brush by dipping it in water. You guys, can you see well? And then get going. So I'm going to just go into some of my colors. Like let's start with maybe the purple. And I'm just gonna start kind of getting the color on. It's almost like my video about, you know, making a blurry background. It's similar to that. Now, I don't really want it to drip over top of my rabbit right now. If you have time and you're not doing this live and you can, you know, separate this into multiple um, time frames, then go ahead. So I'm just dipping into some of these darker colors that I put on my, my blue, my cobalt blue. And see if we compare it to the actual painting that's a little bit hard to see right now, it's quite light. So we're gonna have to mix some something to make it more opaque. So right now, just kind of get it covered. And I, I like to get a little past the edge so that if I wanna paint this edge, because it's slightly rounded, you're gonna have a better time covering it. Otherwise, like if I just went to like right here, you know, I would have to paint the edge all the way like onto the front basically, which I'm not really keen on doing. So when you get around the rabbit, you can use a, a different brush or you can just chance it with the brush you're using. Probably best to, I should probably set a good example, right? So we're still getting kind of that trans transparency behind. So one way I'm going to attack that is by getting this light blue in. So it has more of an opaque look to it. I feel like maybe we needed to add some brown too. I'm getting this dark brown in. So right now I'm kind of applying it fairly thick and I'm following kind of groups. So I'm not like doing dots randomly. Instead, it's almost like clusters of color here and there. So it makes kind of more sense, almost like how clouds are in the sky. They're not just spread out evenly. And yeah, this doesn't have to be the same as the previous one. Not that you can't have like a little blotch of color in one side, that kind of thing. But look how that kind of helped blend it in. So I'm going to kind of make a more opaque area here. How can you, can you see well? I hope you guys can see it well. So I'm not fully blending it. The other pick yet. First, we're just applying it. Just get the paint on. And then we will, so this nice deep purple is really beautiful. We bring some brown into it. It almost makes like a black. Like if you're kind of just trying to get a nice deep in the distance kind of look, which in this section we do. Now, while I'm working this color, I'm going to want to get my other brush. I'm going to hang on to this guy. I don't just sit him in water. And we're going to do this quickly. So that's why I'm not too worried about that. Just keep adding until you feel like it's right. I'm not really going off of the main image anymore. I'm going off of the piece I did previously. So it's not likely going to look the exact same. So I'm going to hold on to this with my one hand. Get this guy, my more controlled brush. You could use a round brush with a more controlled tip. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get into some of my paints that I've been using. Just kind of brush on the side of it. Brushing them off. And then I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to create my edge. Fine tune that edge just a little bit. I feel a little bit shaky. <laughs> I told you guys I'm a bit nervous. I go live on Facebook all the time. So don't worry if it looks like this fanned out look at the moment. Just get it on. Got the shakes. She's got the shakes. Now, let's say you got the shakes and you make a mistake like that. What you want to do is quickly grab another. I always have my brushes out ready to go. Grab another brush, maybe a small round brush, and wet it, but not, you know, it's damp, not soaking. And here's like a magic eraser kind of effect. Now, you need to do this while your paint is still wet. Let's see if I make it too wet, it kind of makes it drip. 
So the other tool you're going to want to use is a clean cloth, unless you like that little gradient of purple coming onto the ear, which I don't want that. Okay, so now I'm just cleaning my brush in between a lot. Otherwise, I'm just spreading this color. So I clean my brush. When I have multiple cameras set up in the future, you'll be able to see a bit better. I just, I needed to like make the move and go live. I just, if it's been kind of my goal, I was supposed to do it last month, but I kind of want to be present with you guys. So this is drying quickly, right? Because this is acrylic paint. So we got to keep moving. We got to keep moving. Going to go around. Needs to be a bit more rounded there. And have fun. Like, I know you can get stressed out in painting. I know. Have fun with it. If it's not perfect, what is perfect when it comes to a painting anyways, right? Round it up. If you're feeling shaky, one thing you can do is use your other hand to hold it in place or hold it onto something like that. Like if my other hand's resting on the canvas maybe in a spot that's not wet. And then, you know, give yourself some support. I'm also kind of painting on this strange angle. So uh, keep that in mind. Anyways, if it's starting to get too dry, just dip your, let me show you, I dip it and then I wipe it. That's gonna get my water a bit dirty, that's okay. And then I get some more color and then we go back in. Now, you don't want these to dry like that. So what I wanna do is have my this other brush that's been sitting there ready to go and kind of come in. Now that that's been covered, get, uh, make sure you're not making it all the same color around. We don't want all this to dry either. So we gotta, I gotta move a bit quicker here. Went a bit too slow. Fearlessly move forward with this. Wet my brush a bit. Now, as I'm getting further down, the color will be changing around me. So I'm gonna get some of my yellow ochre, or what was that, raw sienna? Or yellow ochre, you can grab too. Not yellow ochre. We're gonna bring it nice and lighter down here. Right, well, I'm still using this brush, that's okay, but you can see how it makes a different mark, right? So we'll just get something around here. We're gonna get some greens in there, start moving quickly. Now, if we're moving a bit too slow and our paints are starting to dry, you're concerned about that, two things we can do. Spray, do a full pump so that you can get that nice mist. Can do, we'll just see what happens here. Nice little mist there. Just don't do that too often or else you're gonna have drips. Um, you don't want it to be too wet, but it's just a nice way to get your paint, keep your paints wet if you're using acrylic and you don't have a, a palette that keeps the paints moist because there is that too, which I don't have actually. So I just use this. So we want this to kind of transition to this other color here this warmth in the front. So we don't want it to be too obvious of a line because our subject is gonna be more of the focal point here. So I'm kind of, I need to be on the other side of this painting right now. But I want you to be able to see what I'm doing too. So just have to learn to paint sideways. <laughs> I can paint sideways, it's all good. Now, if I'm not using this for a long time, I'm gonna want to wash off that brush so it doesn't get ruined, okay? I'm liking what's happening here, it's cool. So your colors don't have to be in the exact same spots, but have areas where there's light, have areas where there's more dark kind of clustered, okay? Uh, and then in this area in the middle, it's going to be a bit darker. So I'm going to get some brown and purple mix and kind of 
get in between the two front legs. And I'm just going to brush up like that till it gets kind of a gradient type of look. These paws are kind of hidden. So I'm going to do kind of that brush up there too, around them, so that it kind of looks like grasses. So we'll get some more of these dark tones in there where there's the shadowing happening around these. Even around here needs a little more if I'm following my, what actually makes sense too. Okay, and just certain areas within here too can have some dark because there's shadow throughout, right? You can't, you know, you're not just, just going to have light. It really helps to be really observant in the world. So observe your surroundings. When you start painting, you will start seeing the world differently. You will. So now I want to, I think I'm going to clean this brush because right now I'm really working with this one. And so I don't want the paint. I don't want to ruin this brush. So I'm just going to swish, swirl that pretty purple. Let me know if you're watching this on the replay. If you are paint, if you paint this, you're awesome, first of all. And if you do end up painting it, please uh, tag me on Instagram, like share it in your stories or something like that. Camo Art YYC is my tagline, Camo Art YYC. And uh, yeah, I want to see what you create. That's why. So once I've switched in this, you can see it's all purple, right? See how I wipe the side and dab on. You can't see me, but I'm dabbing on a cloth. I have cloths all around. Then I have this clean one still. I will swish in here. And look, it does change color a little bit. That means there's still some paint in there. I really want my brushes to stay nice. Learn how to clean your brushes. If you're painting with your kids, teach them how to clean their brushes. Don't, so they can you can buy them nicer brushes. Okay, that's my little advice there. I'm gonna clean this guy off too because I want to use my green and I don't want it to be muddy. It will blend on the canvas, but I don't want to start with the dark purple. I want to get this green. See how this green, I don't know if you can see. Hopefully you can see. I'm gonna get this green kind of going in here. Ooh, look at that. pretty bright. Now when you have a really bright color and you're like, whoa, that's intense. Use another color to blend. Anytime you blend a color, it will make it less intense, but I do want an intense foreground. So I'm kind of using my greens that I've got on my canvas and see how I've gone into the areas that are clean first, because my paint is still wet. If I were to just go into this purple area first, then I would dirty up my can my brush really quickly. I'm gonna get some more raw sienna so it looks more natural looking. So as I'm going in here now, what's really cool about this brush is it's creating kind of these lines as I'm going in like this. I'm giving this kind of feel of there's something natural growing there. It's not obvious what it is, it's not clear. It's not going to be. I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just getting some kind of likeness. Like there's some, there seems to be something there through the strokes that I'm making. So depending on how you make your strokes, like how I brushed up like that, that's going to give you a different effect. And I don't want it to just look like grass is just growing from here and up. Like it's, whatever's here there could be leaves there could be all kinds of good things and if there's an area where you're really loving the brightness of color just don't brush over that part <laughs> right sometimes we have a tendency to over work areas oh that's me i overwork things um but you're also exploring so there's not that's okay and then there can be areas where it's more blended because you don't know kind of what's there. And I'm a little worried that this is gonna be like that because I'm going too slow. When I talk, 
I don't paint as quickly. So just kind of looking at the overall feel, what's the balance? Is there something that's standing out to your eye that is off-putting? Then you kind of maybe need to go in that area and do something about it. I kind of want to bring some strokes over the paw areas to give this feel of, okay, like there's, there's a reason the paw's not that long. I need to kind of come in here and wet my brush a bit. And when I'm kind of working muddy like this, I wet my brush in uh, the dirty water is fine, like a, unless you really need it to be clean to do some light work. And I don't want my, like, don't just go, like, move your brush around. So it looks like all kinds of, who knows, maybe it's a little grassy area and it'll give some highlights and some lowlights and super fun. So we're almost done this bottom part here. So what I'm going to do is quickly wash this brush because that top part, oh my, I'm getting paint all over myself. Well, that's what happens, right? And also, did you guys notice I'm wearing purple? <laughs> so I'm cleaning off this brush because I'm kind of possibly done with that guy for now. And that's not even how I'm finished cleaning the brush. I will take my brushes that I've done, that I've used within that session, that paint session, and I will go to the sink and give them a more thorough wash with a cleaner. Um, some of them are quite expensive and yeah, I don't want to, to lose out on those. So this one actually doesn't have to be, I'm going to move on to my mop. I have a couple different mops. So this one will give me more of a blended look. And then this one will give me a little bit of a textured look. So I'm going to go in and just really, uh oh, hopefully I'm thinking some of it has dried already. And I was too slow. <laughs> or I should have uh, gone in. So I'm just trying to blend out this background a bit. So I'm doing really soft strokes in different directions. You could just do one direction. You might have a textured background. <laughs> more textured than I expected. I might have to grab my this guy again and add more paint. Now, when you come to these lighter areas, if you want to keep them lighter, you have to be like more cautious as you're blending these kind of darker and lighter areas together. So I just kind of carefully, very lightly brush over in these different directions. softly, but you can see how it's actually pulling up paint. That means I waited too long. That's the thing about live. It's like, this is real. <laughs> You're going to see the problems as well as the, you know, the whole process, right? As long as we're having fun, it's fixable. What I would do is just wait till this background is more dry and then kind of do another layer over with that. I can try for you guys, I'm gonna try this. It might not work, it might just take off paint. If I try to fix that right now, adding up more paint on top, it might pull the paint off, but we're already getting some of that anyway. So I think it's worth risking it while I have these paints still wet. So what I'm gonna do is kind of add more to the background on top. Don't be fearful. <laughs> it can seem scary. So again, I'm starting with the, my darker colors. It seems to be okay. I think we're, we're doing okay here. Some purple. So you, yours will not look the same as mine. We're each different. And I think that's the beauty of it. I don't want to have everybody the exact same painting. If you're totally beginner, then I understand if you're like feeling like you need to be more precise, but you're going to find frustration in trying to do it exactly as I'm doing it. Follow the technique and procedure and then make it your own. Okay. 
We're going to move quickly this time, right? So see how I've actually muddied that up a bit. Might have to get more. That is cleaner. Okay, let's um, don't like that color that's happening right around the face there. Okay, watch this brush quickly. Move, move quickly. <laughs> Gotta move fast, right? Again, if you're watching, make sure you say hello. I want to know where you're watching from. Okay, now we're dealing. It's a little, maybe a little too wet now. <laughs> you almost have to wait till it's like that in between. But if you go really gently, it can work. Now I've kind of started my dark, so I want to be careful if I'm coming towards my these light blue areas. Otherwise, the dark will just take over. I don't want it to do that. So what I'll have to do is wipe off my brush. So right now I'm just kind of working on those areas with the dark. See how it's really wet up in this corner. It's not going to, to do the blend quite right. It has to be like the right amount of dry, to, I mean wetness as it's drying. I want to add a little bit of blue in here. Okay, see, I need to wipe that off. Otherwise, it's just going to mess up and actually probably going to wash it off just because it's so dark to this light. I'll show you this mop brush too. This one's pretty fun. So you can use it kind of in a swirly motion. Very lightly. I'm like barely touching the canvas with this. Look at these really cool effects that it that it does. It's so cool. So yeah, having the right tools. I think around the ear is a little bit messed up, isn't it? Right here. I was like avoiding that because it's close to the rabbit. It's messing it up. Okay, we're at 30 minutes in. We're in a good place. We're in a good place. Okay, so if I want to work light, so if I've gone over dark and then I go over to the light, it's going to affect that, right? So I have to be careful. I want to keep those lights dominant. Now, I don't really like how it's what's doing there. So I'm going to come in with this guy. See if I can kind of work a little. Give a little more control. I feel like this one gives me more control. So see how it almost has like little clusters, almost like clouds, right? It's not, you know, a pattern that's, you know, very symmetrical. It's more of a random thing, which is really fun to do. I'm going to bring that over that a little bit. Let's get a little more light in here, though. Just dabbing on that light blue. And got to wash that brush off. I'm sure my mop brush doesn't have... I feel like I'm a speed painting. Speed painting. When you're working in these areas where you really need it to blend, right? It almost does like speed painting. I'm going to hold on to this with one hand. Ooh, Charlie's come back. It's like, Mom, are you still talking to yourself? What's going on in here? Very lightly. Oh, he's going to sit down. He's going to enjoy the show. I have to bring it a little more pressure so that I can get down to those paints that are starting to dry. It's in that perfect blending stage of almost drying. You got to work quickly. You could also, if you don't have this kind of brush and you don't want to go buy one, just try a sponge and just kind of dabbing with a sponge, right? You can kind of do a background where you're just kind of dabbing, right? 
That has a weird little blue mark right here. Do you see that? I don't know what's with that area. I'm just like being weird about it, I guess. Here we go. I love painting this way. Like it's very therapeutic. Like this part of the painting to me is like a therapeutic moment. <laughs> I'm not sure I love what's going on over here. No, I don't love what's going on over here. I'm going to get some light. What's this? Blend it out. Okay. What do you guys think? Do you like your backgrounds? How are you feeling? Stressed out? Are you enjoying it? If I just look at the camera, I'm like, wow, this is really blue right here. But it's kind of neat. I don't know. I'm debating whether I should either get some more blue maybe over here or more yellow there. Now's the time to choose. So it's good to step back, step back, take a look from a different angle and see where you feel. So right now I'm seeing, you know, we've got this blue here. This is kind of feeling quite warm. And then this side's feeling very green. So I think I'm going to get back to this guy and get a little more of my greens, mixing a bit of my aqua and kind of coming in here where it's quite warm. Now my other, my paint is, it's going to dry quickly, right? We're dealing with acrylics. So we're dealing with quick drying paint it's already kind of dried in here and I think I'd like to add a little more warmth or something over here and then maybe a little more blue I've got this kind of bright blue and I like it it's kind of like you're creating your own rules but then you have to you have to keep them. Need some darks in here. It's too, looks kind of unnaturally bright green in one area, <laughs> I feel like. The beauty with acrylics is you can paint over it if you didn't like it. In this session, we're not going to do that just because we don't really have time for that. I don't want you to feel like you're in a rush all the time, but just when you need colors to blend, I'm really going to push you to paint it quickly in those moments. I like this purple that's popping up. I don't want to paint over that too much. So I want to get some of this aqua green in there. I think it's kind of cool. No, is that good? That I think it's cool. Okay, cool. We'll leave it. All right, almost 40 minutes, and we've pretty much finished the backgrounds. And now we're moving on to painting the rabbit. So because we have our backgrounds a little bit wet and it will dry quickly, what I want to do is make sure I'm working on areas that are within the rabbit. So we could paint the eye and the nose area. We could paint within the ear. So we can start with a light pink. I think I'm going to start with the light kind of peachy color so that um, it kind of helps us get set into the rabbit rather than just, you know, going for an eye, which feels a little scarier. Um, we can start with maybe the pinks or um, even these kind of beigey tones of the rabbit. So when you have like a white rabbit, you can't just leave that white. We need to you know, establish the shadows and that kind of thing. So we will be using white, but we'll also be blending in with a bit of 
maybe some yellow ochre, a bit of pink. So I'm gonna get some pink. This is a medium magenta that I'll be using, but feel free to use whatever you have. I'm gonna get it somewhere on the canvas. Oh, I don't need much. That was probably too much. I'm gonna get plenty of the white paint. Yep, I need a lot of it. And so I wanna work, I already have my uh, raw umber. If you don't have any raw umber left, put some more on. And then we are gonna need black, but do we need it yet? We might want it just to dull in some of the tones, the hue. Some colors you really just, well, black's not really a good color, but you just don't need very much of. I've got those, I've got pink. I think I'm set to go. So I think let's start with the pink, the peachy. We'll start with the light peach. It's a bit of yellowy peach zone and then uh, move into maybe the darker pink. We'll, we'll work it out, we'll see. I changed my mind. So let's get some brushes that are gonna help us with working on the details of this guy because these guys are gonna be a bit too big. You might be able to do some of the detail, some of it with this one because it'll cover areas for doing the shadowing. So I'm gonna hang on to that guy. I'm going to put away the others, but put them aside so that I know I need to wash them still more effectively. And make sure you wash this guy too. I, I think I forgot to wash that guy. So you don't want dry paint at the top of a mop can, a mop brush because that's not going to, it's not going to be as soft anymore if you do that. Do, 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 do. Saturday morning. Really hope that somebody paints this and some of you will paint this so I can see your outcome and see the result. If I'm helping you well, if you need more help. Okay, so I want to show you some of my very favorite brushes that I'll be using. The quarter inch. If you've watched some of my YouTube videos, you'll see me use this a lot. So I bought two. So I had this one and I bought another one because. I love it so much. So it's nice to have two of the same brush that you really love. It's like jeans. If you have the same, if you have two, then you can wear them pretty much all the time. And <laughs> so uh, when I'm using a light color with one, I could be using a dark color with the other and it kind of works out like that. So let's start mixing a color. So this time I'm not going to mix onto the canvas. I'm going to actually mix on my palette. So I'm going to try and hold the palette so you can see it a bit better. So there's a different ways you can mix. If you're using a palette like this, where it has all this texture, bumpy, lumpy, um, it's not gonna be super easy to mix with a palette knife, unless you don't mind it being like not fully mixed. Uh, another way to do it could be just getting like a flat surface. Some people use um, like a glass top type of thing. You can use disposable types of things like a plate or anything like that. I'm just gonna try and use it like this. You can also just use a brush to mix it in a different area. Just remember where you have wet paint so you don't mess up with that. So first I'm gonna take some of the white, a good chunk of it over here where I know that there's no paint or I hope there isn't any, because I wasn't using gray. And then I'm going to try and create a nice pink. So I like to start with just a little at a time, otherwise, use too much at a time it kind of makes it harder to go lighter then you have to add so much more white to make it light again so that's a nice really light pink like pastel pink but we want something look a little bit more natural for the rabbit so i'm gonna add a little bit of this raw sienna gives it more of a, a warmer tone whereas the previous one was almost a cool Kind of pink this one's kind of giving it a peachy vibe but do you see when i'm mixing i'm not sure if you can see i can't zoom in i could bring it closer <laughs> I'm not sure it's so light that it's probably hard to get the real tones of what i'm mixing um, but it's this kind of peach a really light peach 
So just imagine a peach mixed with white. That's kind of what we got going on here. I'm liking it, I'm liking it. So what you can do that's kind of cool when you mix with one of these is you can now use your palette knife, get this ready. And actually one of the problems now is look at my two water jars. They're both purple now. So what you need to do is clean out one. So I'm just gonna quickly clean out one and be right back. And I usually what I do is I'll clean the dirtier one because when I clean the dirtier one, then the other one's still kind of good. Okay, we are right back. I'm back, I'm back. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> so I've got my clean water now. Because we're dealing with really light tones, you really want to make sure you can actually clean your brush. So it would have been better for me to do that before I got paint on here because now this is already drying. I'm going to use my quarter inch brush and apply some paint to it, load it up. And I'm going to go into the ear here and I'm just going to define this area like this. This is gonna, I'm gonna see quickly if I made it too pink, or if I wanna change the color, the tone. It's not too late. We can do a layer on top if we're feeling like, oh, that's, you know, too pink or whatever. I'm gonna try and leave the white areas white because trying to paint over it is more challenging. I'm also gonna use the same one for around the nose. So it's like this little triangle shape. And then right in here, there's some pink hues. And I'm just going to kind of brush it down almost like a rectangular shape. It looks like a little mustache. I feel like it's fairly light pink at least compared to what I did before. So I think I wanna try adding more of the raw sienna. Might've been too much, but just give it a go. We're just gonna blend some of that into what we just did. Now, if it was like, oh, if I feel like I made a mistake, I wanna blend it out, get a wet, clean brush. Kind of erase it into the area you want. It looks like a funny mustache. Go to shitty mustache. I'm cleaning my brush in between each of those strokes, at least wiping it off. Cool. It's a bit better. It looks a bit weird right now, but just trust the process. I'm going to take off. It was a bit too much paint on my brush. just want just a little bit so I can have more control. Up in this nose, it's going to be a bit darker. And we'll make it even for darker even further. So up in here, I want it to be more peachy rather than pink. So I'm going to try and blend it in if the paint is still wet enough to do so. So there's variations in the tone and the hues within here. So I'm just trying to brush those in as I go rather than having to paint over it later. So I wanna get some of these darker colors in there. So I'm gonna get uh, clean this off just by kind of dipping it in here and then wiping it on the cloth. On my rags that I got. This one I don't need to clean because I still want um, it to be fairly dark. I'm just gonna take my brush right into the paint here and mix it with, I kind of want more of a vibrant tone here. So I'm mixing some raw sienna with my magenta. And I'm just going to come in. There's some areas that are more intense. So this is where we need to kind of be really light with our brush. And I'm 
love this for making fine lines. It will help you make fine lines in the web app. Because they're all furry, you can make these fine little lines. And that will already help you make it look like a real rabbit. Oh, what a sweet little rabbit. Okay. And even into here, I want some of the hue in here to be a little bit deeper. So where we're also adding in the black. So just keep that in mind. Um, because that looks funny right now, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna wash this brush real quick. Just gonna start getting the tones on the whole body. If you kind of look to the side of your canvas a little bit on an angle with where the light is, you'll be able to kind of see if it's shiny or not. That could be the paint that you've chosen has a shine to it, or you can see that it's starting to dry. You can carefully take a finger in the areas you think look dry and just carefully touch them. It's very carefully. You don't want to go <laughs> crazy in there. Oops. So if you've been washing your brush and then the edge has paint on it, just be careful of that. You might want to wipe that off with a rag so that you're not getting the wrong color or you don't want it. So now I'm going to go in and to get this kind of, we don't want it to be peachy for this other area that's giving me the white shadow. So what I'm going to do is get that, was it burnt umber? No, raw umber. Get my raw umber. I'm actually going to see how it looks if I just mix it into this, first of all, because that might do the trick. Kind of mix more of this white into it, too. See if we can get that right tone. Just little bits of it mixed in. So you can see when I'm using this like textured palette, I'm trying to get an area that's more flat, but it is still... I still need it a little bit. So I'm going to use some a little tiny bit of black to take away some of the color, kind of make it more dull, a little more gray. I'm going to add a little more white because I don't want it to be too dark. And I don't mind if it has streaks of other colors in it. It gives me some variation. So I think that's interesting. Wash off my palette knife. I literally just wipe it on cloths that, you know, have been downgraded to from kitchen use to <laughs> would have been bathroom rag use. Um, sometimes they end up here. <laughs> so now I'm going to take this guy. So if you have a half inch brush of some kind, that would work. I mean, you could even use something like this where it has a tapered point but it's round so you can kind of push it deeper. In fact, if you want me to, I'll show you this one. So let's do this one. I use these for my doing paint nights in person. Kind of feel like I'm connecting with you guys though. It's kind of cool. So I'm getting some of that on my brush now. Actually, I see a little thread hanging on there and I want to fix that. So this back ear, It's going to be a bit darker. So I'm going to brush in. So this is a really nice one because it comes to that taper. So I can make like a detailed mark, fine, fine line. Now, if I want to have another brush in hand, it doesn't matter what I'm just going to grab this flat brush. I'm going to get some white on it and come from the other side and blend that out more. It was too strong for me. For what I wanted. Okay, so I like how that blended pretty well. And we can put some like hairlines on the top after. So hang on to this brush. I think I'm gonna give it a quick wash though, just in case I don't use it right away because the other one I am using this one, I don't know for sure. So let's keep going with areas that need more shadowing. So even in here, there's a bit. So it's 
kind of drying up. Look at that. So in here, actually, I might even bring some into here just with the tip of it. I'm just making fine little brush marks. You know what? I think I'm going to hang on to this one because I, I think it's a great way to quickly kind of blend our brush marks. Like how, how white or this beigey color you want it to be. Okay, so under here is quite dark, so we're going to kind of establish this shape here, but some of the light comes there. So in here, it's going to come all the way down in kind of a diagonal up to there where the paw, where the leg is and under but quickly we'll take this other brush we've got with the white and kind of blend some brush strokes up on a slight diagonal to the right upward And then also from the top here to kind of remove that harshness of the line. See how it kind of blends it in nicely. Now, some areas may have a, a more harsh line, so you don't necessarily have to keep it all really blended. There's certain points where the shadowing is stronger like that. Let's continue this method. You might have to wet your brush. So I just kind of dip it into the water, wipe it, dab it back into my paint. My paint light is drying as we speak. So we need to be working somewhat quickly. I'm gonna kind of bring it in here and see if I can take a third brush. <laughs> uh, let's do another one of these. It's good to have your brushes kind of ready on the go. And I don't want this to be so stark. So I'm kind of blending that in. Bring this guy back in the white. Get some of those hairs established in there. And go back in with this guy and get more dark. Maybe I didn't make it dark enough in here. You want to have that differentiation throughout the piece so that it's not just a single tone. There's depth, even in something you're like, oh, white, easy to paint white. Well, not always. Blend out those just a wee bit. You don't want it to look too blended within the grass. Also be careful if it is wet in your grass area. I need to find out a bigger, better setup so I'm not painting like sideways. <laughs> I feel like I'm painting sideways right now. Which is challenging. Don't know if you've ever tried it. I'm gonna get the shadow this is just our base layer because we're going to go in again with um, this is where kind of the leg folds in here with the foot on this guy. So here I'm going to go, you know, actually, let's do this first. It's going to make it easier for you guys. Get that white guy going in. Blend this one in a bit. See how useful it can be to have multiple brushes helping you out. Even in here, I want it to have some differentiation. It's a bit too light. Get that white going.
And right now we're just getting that underneath blend. Afterwards, we'll get the, we're gonna do brush strokes on top that give us the um, little hair look, those hairs. Now this guy is a bit dirty. He's got some of the other color on him. Now, if I feel like I want it to be lighter now, like I've been working in these darks, I want it to be lighter. And actually before I go on, I feel like I need to kind of make this chin area a little bit more that. I don't want it to be too sharp. But fairly sharp. And then I've got some of that purple on there. <laughs> you can mix a little bit more white into this color here. So you can get kind of lighter shading areas. So I'm kind of get this back area needs some color. Use this guy and blend it out. If I use it lightly, almost as like a dry brush, I can start to get some of the look of fur already. I want this one to be kind of this lighter tone in here. I'll just get a bit darker near the tip though. Let's make sure we get that in then. This guy in here. Do you got a little mustache? Since moving back to Calgary, it's like bunnies everywhere. We see so many rabbits. We did not see those. I don't know if I saw one rabbit in Turner Valley. I need to step back because right now I'm kind of sideways. And I need to make sure I'm getting the correct angle here. Get those, make sure you're using your brush in the direction of the fur. I'm going to get this one a bit lighter. Thank you, so cute. Well, Charlie wasn't here. Where'd he go? <laughs> you didn't even notice mom I left what kind of mother are you oh. okay <laughs> the the little rambling talk that I that I do now in here it's a bit um, it's not very smooth because of the way I did that brush stroke upward. So you can kind of come in here and fix that a bit. It's like grainy almost, you know, you know what I'm saying? If you have any of the darker color too, you could go in and use that. But I think I'm just gonna try and use the color that I've, the deepest tone of this that I've created and now this is not the best brush for doing these fine little details. So I'm going to switch over pretty quick because it feels like I'm just about ready. I feel like this looks too, um, unnatural it looks a little unnatural so let's kind of blend in a little bit of that let's get this kind of it's like this fur right so make it kind of a blurry fur hairy fur thing going on here <laughs> get some brush strokes in here so i don't have those little dots that i've created I want my brush again. Do, do, do. My head isn't in the way at any point. Let me know. 
Let me know what you guys think of my first live. Be kind. Okay, let's wash that brush. We're an hour in. I'm really happy. I was worried. How long is this going to take me? Are we going to be able to get it done within the time frame? I'm washing all these three brushes that I've just been using. Set them aside so you know which ones you've used to either reuse again or just so you know you can wash them at the end. Make sure that they're been fully cleaned. This is just your kind of preliminary wash. Okay, I'm gonna get to my quarter inch angular brush, which I love. This one's a longer handle. I decided to get one with a longer handle since I have one with a short handle. I don't know, I just thought I'd give it a try. Let's go in and get our little black areas in because we're gonna need some highlighting on the eye as well. So I'm gonna wet the brush. Let's try the long handled one. You could also just use a fine, like a round tapered brush. Like something like this would probably work too. Uh, but something like this is gonna give you more fine line detail. Or you could use a script liner brush, which is a long, thin tipped brush. When it's wet, it gets thinner. It comes together. Um, that's something to note sometimes when you're at the store getting brushes. You might find that, oh, does that really taper? Well, it might actually. So you can always ask, ask for assistance. Even I ask for assistance at these stores. Now, if we don't want it to be fully black, then we can mix with a little bit of brown. But I am going to start with just fully black for the eye for sure. Now, this should be dry. If I look at it, it does look a bit shiny, but I think it's just the paint that I used had a bit of shine. So I'm going to establish kind of where the point of the eye is. Looks like if you're coloring. This is how I color anyways. You usually, I usually start with the outline and then fill it in so that you can kind of more quickly fill in. So because we're on a bit of an angle, the eye isn't facing us directly. Make sure you have enough. Like your brush is wet enough, not dripping. But make sure it is wet enough. Make sure you have another brush on standby for any fixes that you need to make. The side's a little more rounded because we're kind of seeing the side of the eye. If you just left it totally black, it might look a little creepy. Just not real. <laughs> Take a look at your own eye and see how much variation is within that. So it looks a little angry. I think I want to bring this part up a little bit more. Don't fail me, brush. Don't fail me now. You can always go back in. Like I said, have another brush on hand. That's why I like having two of these. Very just damp. And you can just go over top. And kind of fix that line and make sure you clean it quickly and keep moving quickly because that black is just like spilling ink. You know, it's a huge mess. If you've ever done that before, <laughs> hopefully not. It's not a pleasant thing. I'm just going to take this black, actually wash it off a little bit. Yeah, why not? Because that's still wet. And I'm going to mix a bit of brown. Just while this is wet, I'm going to get some my... Raw Sienna, maybe put a bit of the browns. They're kind of melded together now, so. And just a tiny bit of white. Make sure you're grabbing the white from the side. And look, the white changed it so quickly. I don't know if you can see it, it's probably far away. I'm gonna go in, do this kind of line up the side. And then we're gonna bring, no, this is too dark, too light. 
more brown. I'm going to kind of bring it into this middle zone. It's a bit better. Maybe a bit darker. Kind of more the creating more depth to the eye rather than just one tone. And when I'm using my brush, make sure like a small brush, especially when you're doing fine detail, wipe the side that like you might get build up around here. So just be really aware of that. We are going to highlight it too with some white. So keep that in mind. We're not at the finish point. And I'm just going to use this color that I've kind of created instead of the black, I think, for this little nose. I can almost just stamp it with this one. The side is just a little tiny bit. So I'm going to wipe my brush quite a bit, just flat like that, to kind of make sure that the paint is not gathering at the base, because that can cause you problems. Ooh, stretching my side funny. OK. This is going to be where the personality comes. This is your personality, Bunny. I think I do want a bit of black. And it's easy to go back in with a little bit of black over top. Is it cute? Are you a cute bunny? I'm all right. Yeah, because of the angle we're on, we're not going to do the full other side of it. And actually, I'm just looking at my reference image right now, and I want to add a little more highlighting to that eye. So I'm cleaning off my brush real quick, getting into that brown. I'm mixing it with the light brown. It sounded like I said brown. <laughs> that sounded weird. I think it might also just be the eyelashes because I'm looking at a black and white image of my piece. Can you see it? Oh no, it's above this uh, black and white image of, that I printed off. That'll be for oh, we're really going wild with it. Well, let's make sure we have the black in where we want it to be. That's why you need a reference image. You have us been mostly painting off of that guy, but if you use your reference image, you're going to have more information, correct information. It's not 100%, but it's okay. Now I'm going to clean up my brush, get a little white. I'm not just going to do a daub of white. Like that would just look cartoony. I'm going to mix it in. In fact, I could probably just use some of this that I used before to paint the the shadows. And then I'm going to go in and find the spots. Use the reference image to find the spots where the light is touching the eye. It might be a strong dot of color, like a tone. But there's areas that are more blended, not as bold. Okay, good. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm sure that's probably pretty hard to see from this. If I could zoom in, it would be a bit better. Because it looks so bright, doesn't it? I'm looking at my laptop to see. Yeah, that looks like it's difficult to see. Hmm. What could I do to help you guys see a bit better as we're doing these details? Let me see if I can shift things a bit for you guys. Oh, you can see my studio a bit. <laughs> I'm 
just going to shift around a bit so you can see more detail. Make sure my pants don't fall down. Okay. This can be turned too. Move this closer. Oh, don't knock over the other painting. You guys are not even a meter away from the piece, but the, it kind of makes it look like it. Now you won't be able to see my palette right now, but I think right now it's more important to see the canvas. So now we're going to work in just the feathering details. Like we're at like this finishing point almost. Now this part can take a little time and it's really important because right now it just looks like this funny, funny, <laughs> doesn't look quite right. So now I'm just going to go straight up with the white. So you don't really need to see my palette anymore. Just make sure you're using clean water or if it's just the mix and mine just looks kind of like milk. So I'm okay with that because I'm using white. Make sure it's an opaque white. And if not, you can even use some gesso. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in the little furry details. Start in an area where you feel more comfortable. Like I'm going to go into this ear area. I know there's some longer strands and I'm just using it very lightly on the, the middle section of the brush. Often re like applying the paint, wiping it so that I get fine lines that are more control. I know what I'm going to get. I'm going to cover up some of this pencil crayon that's showing still. So some areas you won't see the fur as much and other areas you kind of see little, little bits. So in here, just using my reference image that's above. Reapplying and relax. <laughs> Have fun with it. Just creating this more natural look by adding in these fine lines, starting from the area that's already kind of white and then brushing lightly away will help you get that nice pulled away tip look. Great, I'm liking how this is looking here. Now, on the very edge, we can add a little bit of feathering. Just lightly using your brush to create little, like a, almost like a little jagged line. How furry is this guy? Now, if you kind of, that one went out a little far, have your other brush clean and ready to step in and erase. And give it another go. Clean that guy off and keep going. I've noticed in my image there's a bit of fuzziness like right here. So I'm going to rest my wrist on my canvas where it's dry. And do these light strokes. He has this little fur coming here. I'm 
use something for support. It's fine, that's not cheating. Absolutely not. Not at all. Up here, I want some more. I don't know if you guys can see, it's so tiny. But these little things that I'm doing, look at how much of a difference it makes, like right in here. Suddenly that looks more like a realistic bunny, right? Okay, I can go in by the face right here because this is some kind of paint that's bothering me a bit. Now on top of the nose we have little hairs. Not completely covering what we've done, but just to Again, make those fur marks. Ah! <laughs> what the heck? What just happened? <laughs> I'm going drifting off into La La and I need a drink of water. Hydration. That's what's missing. <laughs> we're an hour and 20 minutes. I said two hours, and I think we're definitely finished in 40 minutes, probably sooner. As long as I don't keep making mistakes, like brushing right over the eye, although there is a whisker that goes over the eye. Whiskers are going to be a little challenging, forewarning. Now, my only problem is now I'm trying to go over here. These are pretty much dry though. They dry really quickly. So I'm not too worried about those. So up in here from my reference image, I'm seeing that the first, let's go right here. Come off here. Now you could probably use like a fan brush or something to get a similar thing, but I like to have more control over my piece. And the trick is because we have this smooth line and then we're adding little strokes to it to try and blend it so it doesn't just look like you don't see that really strong line and then like almost little grass like things on top. They don't have to all be perfectly in line because if you think about it, it's probably in real life not going to look perfect like that. So I'm getting to this ear and in this ear, I need to kind of bring this bit a bit lighter up in here needs some more. Watch the direction of your strokes that they match the direction of the fur, right? As I'm coming around the face, the direction changes to more of a sideways and then it turns downward. So just be aware, be aware. It's like, it looks like it has eyelashes. Do they have eyelashes? Why not? They should, right? I've just never really examined them before. <laughs> My dog has eyelashes. I wonder if that's one of those must-have things for a mammal. Must-have eyelashes. Maybe somebody can tell me. There is a whisker that like goes over the eye. But I'm gonna kind of bring it like up. Like that. Start bringing in the cheek. These whiskers won't be as visible, the ones that go over top of the rabbit. 
but because they're a different direction, we should still be able to see them. And if we don't go too crazy with adding the fur in other areas, let's go back to this ear. And we should be fine. That might have been a bit long, but I'm just going to see if I can make it work rather than erase. So sometimes I try to make it work. Sometimes I erase, depending on how important I think it is for the whole overall image. If I think it adds a little character, then maybe I'll keep it for that reason. I'm reapplying my paint very often. I feel like this is actually supposed to be lighter in here. And then it gets dark there. Yeah, let me grab another brush so I can blend that. And we're getting there. I think they got a cute bunny. Some paintings take hours and hours, so it's, you know, to be able to do a painting in two hours is quite the feat, right? Gonna do just bringing that out a bit more. Spark can be therapeutic in its own way too, right? Like the background was this fun therapy kind of movement and blending and all kinds of fun colors we can throw in. And then now I'm kind of in this quiet zone where I'm just in a peaceful kind of place. I might go over some of them just to make them a bit stronger over top of that dark background. They can get lost. Let's bring it around. This part actually gets brighter too. So it comes around, but not right there. Right there. Oh, backwards. She's losing it. <laughs> Start painting my shirt accidentally. Good. Let's move on to kind of finishing the face, starting to get into that. You kind of find yourself, like you start one spot, you kind of move to another. Do the things that help establish the space first, I think is helpful. See a little, little lines here. Gentle free lines. You're not really going to go under the chin with it. Um, but right in here. <laughs> so cute. Look at that. Just a cute little furry friend. Making sure my tones are correct. Oh, I'm gonna have to find a different way to stand and paint and be able to show you guys at the same time because, yeah, let's just say painting sideways, it's not good. I want this actually to round up just a bit more. Let me round you out. Oh, that's better. Yeah. There you go. So we can still kind of fix 
fixed my edging there if it's not quite right. And I kind of come this side so that I can rest my hand when I go to this side. So what I'm going to do is, they don't seem quite long. I'm sure your brush is wet enough. that it can really, you can manipulate it better. If it starts to get kind of dry and gloopy, it's not gonna work for this application. I wonder if I can go the other side. Three legs in the right direction. They're very, very looking. Like that's almost not even bad to have that like that. It's fairly accurate according to the image. I just get myself on the other side. Let's see if I can turn this, but you can still see. No, 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 no. That's not right. Good. Okay, well, I'll just keep doing this then. So in here, we do have some areas that kind of highlight the fur. So I'm going to kind of see like these little bright highlights of the fur through here. So I'm just going to find those. I'm just going to keep that almost like an ink. Keep looking to your reference image to find where you should place those highlights. I need to turn the canvas a bit in order to paint this and not take forever. It's actually supposed to have some little first coming off too. And I feel like when I paint animals, they almost become that particular animal almost becomes real to me. Probably like when someone writes a story, those characters are quite real to them. Well, I do have a beard. I don't know. I don't know if I want a beard for you. <laughs> That's a little funny. Let's let's get some of that off. Uh oh. Don't let it dry. Just erase. Come back in with a clean brush. Raise it. Now what I need to do to fix this is to kind of paint it with the eraser. That makes sense. It's like Photoshop 
paint with the eraser. If you're masking something. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. Then you have to come back in and make sure you did it properly. Make sure your brush is tidy. You to come in here and kind of fix these paws that are come in here to remove some of that grainy look. It's grainy. You don't want that. Okay, so in here I need more of these little highlight strokes. I go very light. Like I have been doing just even more cautiously, I feel like. And then in these areas where it's the transition is pretty similar tone, then I don't have to worry as much about how light I'm going. to keep that shadow in its place. I got my baby bunny. I haven't grown into my fur yet. Kind of what it seems like. It's a little messy in this spot here, but I can kind of just bring some strokes of where the fur will be. It can help clean it up a little bit. It's almost an abstract zone anyway, so I don't really want the focus to be there. And then some of these highlights kind of come onto this. Can still see it well. It's a little more comfortable to paint in my current position that I'm in than when I was trying to do it sideways. Then as I get to the side, there's almost groups of, almost like the clustering we did with the sky, kind of something similar to that. Areas where it's kind of, oh, this area is kind of lighter. And so I'm kind of doing groups of these brush strokes. Where is it lightest? Up here we're getting some of the fur texture showing on the side. You can try to use your brush to get some of that look. We do a really fine brush stroke when you do that, and then you're gonna have these areas that let are less out of your less in your control. But it's a bit quicker, you know, using the brush to create those feathered edge. And maybe you can start with that, not a bad idea here, kind of go like that and then afterwards add in. some detailed ones. Now that's a bit faster than that. And it still works pretty well. Gives that kind of a little bit more fuzzy look. So you need a fuzzy look, like maybe in here I want to make the ear look a little fuzzy. Just use the brush. And then when you want 
one that's going to stand out a little more like these do have ones that kind of come out more. Let's come in with the brush. Do that. The tip of it. It's one of my brush. I really don't need that much paint to do this. I might do that. Uh, that hair is not as fuzzy. Some of it's more clean and contrasting. So we'll use that where that works. So it's a little more fuzzy looking. Like on the back, it works pretty well because it's not in uh, as much focus. And if you have too much paint on your brush, it's not going to quite work the same. So let's say you take this other brush that's kind of dry after you've applied a bit of the paint and it kind of pulled it out. So again, I just went with the paint, take the other brush and draw it out a bit. There, that worked well. And then in here we have some, let's get the brush that actually has more of the paint on it and get some more body. And then we'll get the whiskers on, and then we'll be able to sign it. Awesome. I like when there's a strand that kind of stands out. Like that. You don't want just one. You need to have more of that going on. For a long time, we're almost at the ah. I thought we'd be pretty much done by now, but these little details sometimes they just take longer, right? So let's get in these whiskers because I feel like we're ready to do that. Maybe I could add in a few more fur in here. So for the whiskers, it'd be really challenging, but just make sure your brush is really prepped. Oh, I just got different paint on my hand that you don't want. You might so get your brush quite ready. I mean, do you see how I'm starting to build up paint right there? Let's just wash our brush off. Just get it clean. Nice clean slate is kind of what I'm imagining. Okay, clean brush in the paint. I'm sure, it's wet enough, and we can just start up here and go, oh no, see, that happens, that's okay. I needed my brush to be a little more wet. It's going a little more wet than before. Okay, that didn't work. So if it doesn't work quite well, just, well now I'm wondering if I used it the script liner for this part might have but you can use your other brush to thin out the line which seems to be working pretty well 
they're kind of going in different directions. These little strands. Okay, coming up here. I'm actually going to grab my script liner and see if that's the one I used. I feel like I thought it was the quarter inch one, but it might be the script liner. So if you, have, if you have a script liner brush, grab it, wet it, get it in the paint, make sure your paint is still wet enough, and to give it a little spray. Let's give the script liner a try and see how we, oh, yeah, that's much better. Sometimes it's having the right tool. <laughs> I'm gonna re-wet it very often. So in this section, there's quite a few kind of fanning out in various directions and lengths. They're quite long. I don't know if that was a little too long, but we're going with it for now. Now I feel like those ones are a bit too thick, but that's what they're at. So I don't know if I want to try and clean them up. Sometimes you can erase, just redo the line, like erase the whole line and redo it. Sometimes it's more beneficial to try to do what I'm doing here and just thin it out. Getting there. Seems to be working. Cool. That's much better. I think I'm going to fix this one too. This one got a little raggedy. Disappear. Okay, let's finish this guy up. If it's not wet enough, it's not going to give the right look. Also, I think that one went over some bumps. I need some of them to get as long as that one, otherwise it'll look funny. Wet it again. Very wet. Oh dear. <laughs> that was not wanted. It's the mega, I mean, it was longer. That was good. It's the new out. And it takes a lot longer if you make mistakes. <laughs> but when you make mistakes, you can learn how to fix them. And then you're better equipped. It's a bit better. Okay. Not too much paint on the brush. Keep it nice and thin. Very light. Keeping my distance. That was better. Okay, I'm a little thick with those lines, but not going to be too crazy um, anal about it. Okay. It's okay. It's a little thick there, but I'm just going to roll with it. There's like one that rolls in a bit, curls in up there. And then there's these ones here. They kind of curl this.
And even in here, there's some of these dots, just where the hair follicles kind of coming out. Beautiful, here we go. Wet the brush, get more paint. It's a bit easier when you're going over light over light, but you can't see it as well either. Time to take a step back. I wanna wash my brush. Take a look if there's anything that's kind of bothering the eye. Which usually there is. <laughs> There's always something. You can keep going to really refine it. I feel like in here it looks weird, kind of lumpy. It's a bit better. I also don't like in here. Oh, it looks grainy. I like a smooth. A little more fur coming here. Okay. Oh, there's a good one here. Maybe we will add a little white. Just to get a little more, a little something extra. There we go. And then I feel like right here needs these little it's here. Oh, that looks silly. No. Fix that. Almost ready. Maybe you want to do touch-ups here and there, but not. I'm going to wash my brush. And then I'm going to choose just like some raw sienna, maybe yellow ochre even. Maybe I'll mix the two. And down in this corner here, I'm just going to put my, we're going to sign you guys. Here we go. Putting my initials. Again, this is like kind of what we were just doing. Getting the paint wet enough, making sure it's not globbed onto your brush. So you can do a fine line. It's almost too fine there. Or you could also use a script liner brush. I often just use this um, angular quarter inch angle. My camo. Can be more yellow ochre. Okay, my brush is getting a little blobby. As long as you're aware of where the gloves are, it can sometimes work. Yeah, the yellow ochre is working out well for this. Kind of want to use something that's not, it's still going to stand out, but not take away from the piece. Put 
So I'm painting my fingernail accidentally. Need more water. I didn't suspect that signing took me so long, did you? <laughs> my secrets are all revealed. Oh, I think Charlie's coming to check out. At least I could hear him. He loses interest pretty quick. He's like, oh, who are you talking to? And then, then he's gone pretty quick. And then I add my little O. So I used to be K-O. And now I'm K-M-O. Ta-da! So I'm going to wash my brush. I'll zoom in so you can see. Oh, I'm almost exactly at the two hour mark. You guys, I'm pleased with that. I like to be a person of my word. I'm going to lift this up and bring it closer for you. Let's see. See throughout the piece. On different angles. Some angles look better than others. So yeah, I feel like I could probably go in again to my background and just kind of blend in some of this a bit, just the way that it um, doesn't feel blended enough in there for me. Um, but yeah, that's our two hour painting of a bird, a uh, bunny of <laughs> a bird. Hello, I must be tired now. <laughs> two hours of doing this I do feel a little bit tired so and here's the other one let's bring the other guy over so they're friends this one I spent more time and so there's things I like more about this one the background is more successful in this one in some areas but I love the foreground in this one so you know, I did spend a little, wasn't under the pressure of time for that. So those are the two bunnies. What I do like about this one is, I do like the size of this one, it's kind of nice. It's kind of a bit softer in some ways. Maybe it's the baby, not the older sibling. So, let me just bring you to me. Bring it up because I'm taller. All right. Woo! That's so close. To my face. That's my palette. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much for joining me in today's painting paint with me session. Um, yeah. Leave me a comment below. How, what did you think of this piece? What did you think of the experience? Um, and don't forget, if you did do the painting, to take a picture of it and share it with me at KMOArtYYC. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys create. Thanks so much for watching. That's it for today. Enjoy your weekend. All right. Bye now.